Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. This is Electricity 101. My name is Spibs, and in the next few episodes, we're going to be having a look at a few different designs that could either be incorporated into a trap or puzzle based design. Before we get into it, I just wanted to thank the whole community for the channel reaching 100 subs. We also hit another milestone this week as well, which was one of the videos hitting 1,000 views for the very first time. So I wanted to thank everybody who's contributed, given feedback, or just helped out in any way possible. You guys know who you are, but without further ado, let's get into this one. All right, so like I mentioned, this is a module that you might incorporate into a puzzle design or a trap base. Now you may want to modify it a little for depending on your needs, but we'll have a look at exactly how it works. So I can see the pressure pad in front of me. It's not really hidden. I can see this prison cell gate and I can see the two switches on the wall and of course my brilliant drawing on the wall. Of course I'm a, you know, world famous artist here. Anyway, I'll enter through the prison cell gate and see what happens. So as soon as I step onto this pressure pad, the prison cell gate closes behind me. I step off, I try and reopen it, see if I can get out and that's obviously not going to happen. So. I start to look around, I can see there's two switches on the wall. One here, presumably controlling this door, and then another one here, presumably controlling this door. So, they obviously want me to make a choice. I'm gonna choose this door first. And unfortunately, it looks like I'm dead. There's these traps behind here. I've made the wrong choice. Something else interesting happening though is I flick that switch and all of a sudden this switch has no power anymore. What if I'd chosen the other door? If I'd chosen the other door, it looks like I'm free. Let's have a look at the circuit and see what's going on behind. Before we have a look at the circuit itself and the components that are required, we can easily reset this module by using this RF transmitter to reset the circuit. All we have to do is just make sure these doors are closed and the two switches there are off. Here we have the heart of the circuit. Now this circuit requires approximately 17 units of power in this particular configuration and we require one solar panel, five electrical branches, three door controllers, two switches, one blocker, one memory cell, one pressure pad, one RF receiver and one RF transmitter. Alright, so we're going to go ahead and start wiring this up. Now I've just removed the two foundations here in front of us so we can hide the wires uh, well. So we'll place the RF receiver at the end and wire that up. If you need to slow this down at all, go ahead and do so. Otherwise, any questions, just hit me up in the comments. Alright, now that we've wired all of that up, we're just going to place the foundations to completely hide our wires here, and then we're going to place our RF receiver about here. Now we're just going to connect the final parts here, so we're going to run the power out up to the reset of the memory cell, and then we're going to give it its own power source. So we'll just run the branch out of this electrical branch, and connect it to the power in. 
now everything should be working, but there are a couple more things that we just have to check. Firstly, we have to make sure that the electrical branches are sending out enough power to certain parts of the circuit. There are only two electrical branches that we have to change from default. This is the first one here. We set that to 17 to provide the whole circuit with enough power. The other socket here that we're using can be connected to a different circuit if you have a larger power source than just the one solar panel that we have in this configuration. The other one that we have to program is the electrical branch connected to the memory cell here and we just have to change it to three. The other step that we have to make sure is we set our frequency here. So I'm just going to use my one here, 5858. Make sure my RF transmitter is set to the same one so we can reset the trap once we're done with it. I'm going to replace my traps again here. You can use whatever traps you want. And then I'm just going to place a wall here. Providing you've done everything correctly up to this point, the trap should now be working. So we just test it simply. We walk in here, we make sure the door closes. We can see that these switches are receiving power. If I turn on this one, then it opens this door. And if I leave it on, I can see that this switch no longer has power. If I, of course, turn it off, and run back over here, I can see that it's receiving power, and if I flick it on, then it's opening. Pretty simple. The only other thing I have to check is that my RF receiver is working, so I hit that, and it resets this door. Easy. Just quickly, before we wrap up, I just wanted to point out one thing that I noticed while I was testing this design especially for those who are interested in implementing it into a trap-based design. Now, this pressure pad can be exploited in the sense that if I quickly go in and out, I can see exactly what it does. However, if you have an understanding of the electrical system, then you could set the memory cell up on the other side to have a door on either side here, open up with a trap on either side, and then quickly uh, kill the person anyway. You could also implement it into a puzzle base to punish the person for not actually going in as well, but that's entirely up to you guys. Alrighty guys, that is going to wrap it up for this episode. I hope it was helpful and I hope it made sense. I'd love to see some people add to this design and make it even better and, uh, and see it in a base. This will be in a uh, bigger and actual operational design in the future. Uh, but I wanted to show off a couple more ideas that I had first in the upcoming episodes. Just as usual, if you didn't like the episode, then hit that dislike button. But if you did like the episode, then smash that thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and don't forget to follow me on Twitter. The link will be in the description below. Any other links that I may have mentioned in this video will also be in the description. Otherwise, guys, we'll see you in the next one. Take care.